Hey everybody and welcome back to part two of our big painting marathon. Just wanted to hop on here, give you a little intro, say if you haven't, go ahead and click the subscribe button right now. This is a schooly journey you do not want to miss and we're right in the thick of it. Uh, so just wanted to say hello, welcome to our channel, and enjoy the episode. Hey guys, thought I'd hop in here and start giving you some more context during these time lapses. So you can see Nick and I here going ahead and sanding the whole bus with 220 grit sandpaper. Uh, we used 5 inch orbital sanders and while it worked pretty well for what we were doing and allowed us to go really fast, definitely had some imperfections and things showing through with the primer which isn't totally unusual, it was just one coat of primer over black paint so we were kind of expecting a little bit of it but the flat sanding face against the curved edges of the bus definitely made some of that show through a little bit more. Not anything terribly wrong, but just something to note here. All right guys, moment of truth. Opening the dark blue to see it for the first time. Regan's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice. It's gonna be nice, Reg. It's gonna be plenty dark. That looks really nice, actually. See? That's gonna be nice. So, dark blue is what we're going with. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> dark blue is what we're going with. Thinning it a little bit. Uh, it says you can thin up to 10%, so we're gonna thin it a little bit. Help us keep a wet edge for rolling and tipping. We'll see how this goes. Time to mix. Spray the whole boss. These foam brushes don't work. This guy's a liar. Blaming the guy. <laughs> I would think that they would or else $15 yeah. a brush. How are you feeling, Reg? <laughs> I'm feeling better. Yeah? Yeah. It is a nice blue. It's a very nice blue. How do you feel? I'm excited. I mean, obviously, I'm not as concerned about the paint color as Reagan is because... I'm not concerned about the paint color, I'm concerned about the glossy. I'm also not concerned about the glossy because we have a lot of flattener that we can add as needed. Um, and the flattener is going to extend the paint, so if we add a quart of flattener to a quart of paint, we effectively have two quarts of paint. Uh, so I think if we really needed to and we feel like it's still not flat enough, we'll just do another coat with still a lot of flattener, so we'll see. He doesn't tell me these things until right now. I could have slept better last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, and the color has begun. You can see here we're working pretty well as a team, so I wanted to go ahead and explain to you what our method here was for rolling and tipping. As you can see, we had Caroline going ahead and working ahead, and getting around the bolt holes, getting in between the windows, getting some of the seams and uh, those areas that the rollers weren't really going to touch very well. Nick was then going ahead and rolling, and Reg was our tipper. So after Nick would roll a small section, Regan would come in and slowly, gently drag over with the brush to get rid of any air bubbles. That's really the whole point of tipping, just to really smooth everything out and get rid of all the air bubbles. Uh, one thing to note here, I think we were working in a little bit too big of sections. You know, with paint, uh, it's easy to get carried away and want to paint huge sections. But here, it's really important to be working with wet paint. If you're working in too big of sections, and you're letting the paint dry too much, you're going to have troubles tipping it. Uh, you may cause imperfections in the end, and the paint may not lay as well. So definitely try and keep working in small sections and working with wet paint. The paint starts to dry up and get tacky. Obviously the paint thinner and adding that helped definitely keep a wet edge, but I would recommend only doing probably about two foot by three foot sections at the most. Other than that, paint went on pretty easily. Definitely the foam brushes that we picked up that we were talking about there worked better than actual regular brushes. Even buying a professional brush still did not work as well as the cheap foam brushes because it didn't have any brush marks left behind and it was really nice, had a nice pointed edge to it. So thumbs up to the guy that recommended those to us at the store.
And good morning, everybody. It is now Tuesday. We're looking at 8.45 a.m. and we are here to put the second coat on Miles. As you can see, he officially has color on him, but it's still splotchy because it was over a light primer. So doing a second of coat, but first, more sanding, woohoo! Look who's here this morning. Look, <laughs> she's barely popping in. Rag, what do you think? Of the color. Oh, it's much better than what was in my head. <laughs> yeah. It's it's turning out pretty good and this coat was without the flattener. So today we're adding flattener to the paint to hopefully make it a matte satiny, probably satin type finish. Um, which I think is gonna look good. So Okay. <laughs> I don't like this out of satin. <laughs> Here we go. Time to sand. All right, so for this round of sanding, we went ahead and used 320 grit sandpaper, so even a little bit finer. This is what Interlux recommends between top coats, but uh, as you can see here, it was taking off quite a bit more than we expected, and we were even moving really fast with it. I think part of that, again, is the orbital sander, but part of that is also the fact that we undercoated with white, and this was only one blue coat over the top of it. Regardless, we were okay with it. We just knew maybe that would mean for sure a third coat that we would do. Overall, pretty much the same as the other sanding, just moving a lot faster, really just trying to get a smooth coat here. All right, you guys, so we are done with sanding the blue. We all look like Smurfs. Now we're gonna do the white real quick, but we're going to vacuum out the sanders, um, swap to new pads because obviously this blue dust we don't want getting all over the white or try to avoid it. I mean, we're still gonna wipe it down afterwards, but the less blue we can swirl into the paint, the better. So, gonna vacuum these and then let's get going on the white. Like I said before, guys, this is a much less aggressive round of sanding. With the 320 grit, all we're really trying to do is get rid of any small imperfections in the paint, maybe any orange peeling or bubbling that there was, while at the same time giving the new top coat a little bit of a roughened up surface to adhere to. After we were done with the painting, just like between all the other coats, what we did was went ahead and wiped the bust down with mineral spirits and then let it sit for a little bit just to completely dry and let all the mineral spirits evaporate off and really make sure that the bust was clean and dry for this next coat. All right guys, Mona's here to put on our second coat. So one thing we have to take into consideration here is we're wanting to use flattener. I kind of talked about that earlier. Um, I have blue on my face? No, just a mustache. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use flattener to flatten out the gloss of the paint, but uh, it's recommended that you do that on the last coat. So as we've been standing here today, we've kind of realized that we may need a third coat for the blue. I think the white is gonna be okay. Um, and part of that is because a darker color you're typically supposed to put over a gray primer, which can help, but still, uh, this paint you're supposed to use two to three coats anyways, so the fact that we may have to use three coats when we undercoated with something that was lighter makes sense. But we want to just do a quick test spot to see how it looks, see if it covers, and then if it does, uh, we're gonna add flattener today. If it does doesn't, it? <laughs> we won't add flattener today, and we'll do a third coat and add flattener then, so let's see what it looks like. Okay, so the paint didn't cover on this coat quite like we had hoped. A few light spots were still showing through, but that's okay. One thing we had to take into consideration is that the flattener actually hinders the paint's ability to cover the coat underneath. The flattener is essentially a translucent, uh, kind of opaque liquid that extends the paint and obviously affects the finish. So that being said, it almost essentially thins the paint and thins the color so if we would have used flattener on this coat, it would have hidden the color even worse. That's why we made the decision, which was an easy one, to not add the flattener to this coat, which ended up being the right decision. And we'll come back on the third coat and add the flattener. We're using the same rolling and tipping technique we did with the other coats. So we were working as a team, one of us rolling, one of us tipping, one of us getting into the seams. Obviously at times there's there parts where that slowed down, but overall, you want to try and work as a team, work and get a good flow going together to keep that paint wet, keep your edge wet, and avoid things drying up. All 
Alright guys, and we have our second coat. If that's all we're gonna do for today. We thought obviously we were coming here and we were gonna get the second coat done on everything and everything was gonna be fine and dandy and that was gonna be it and we are gonna have a blue bus. Well, we have a blue bus and a white bus. The white only, we didn't do another coat on it, we're just kinda crunched for time and I've got something this evening. So I wanna get home and not be rushing to that. Uh, we have to do a third coat anyways on the blue, so we just left the white for today because that's probably only gonna need two coats, we're thinking. Fingers crossed on that. But either way, uh, we'll be coming back to do a third coat for the blue. So that's it for now. It's looking awesome. Uh, maybe I'll give you guys a quick walk around here just to give you a status update. So it looks much less splotchy than yesterday. The color has gotten darker as well. Um, which we want. Which we want, yeah. Uh, the color is much, much more of a dark navy. Um, but we still got some splotches. It's much glossier, which like we said, the gloss is going away. So what do you think? Of the gloss going away? Of everything. Oh, I think it's turning out great. Oh, like I said it would. <laughs> oh, huh. Funny how that works sometimes. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, the, the white you can see here, uh, it's covered pretty well. Uh, there's just some spots that came up as we were standing this morning, but I think those will hide well with that second coat of white. But uh, yeah, look at how shiny that is. Look at how shiny, it's a mirror. I know, I hate that. <laughs> I can see myself better on the yeah. side than I can in the window. <laughs> Check it out, how good that looks. I'll give you a full step back here. Wow. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks pretty dang good. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna call it here today. Don't know when we're gonna be back for the third coat. Um, this was gonna be our vlog this Wednesday. It's gonna be, a, I already started editing it and it's gonna be a really long one it looks like. So maybe I'll make it a part one, part two. So I can put a video out Wednesday in case we don't get here to paint by then. So. Um, that is tomorrow, yes, so that's probably what I'm gonna do. But uh, we will see you guys when we are coming back for coat number three and coat number two. <laughs> so hopefully the finish of this part of the bus because we still gotta paint the ceiling. So always more to be done, always more to be done, but we're stepping in the right direction and it's looking good. Right, Reg? Right. Right. Not great. Not great? The glossiness. It's really yeah. hard for me to yeah. without it. But. The glossiness doesn't look, it's glossy in here, um, but if it was outside, it would be mega glossy for sure. Which yeah, so let's is be why we're not outside. Yeah. Meg would be freaking out more. But flattener's coming to fix all that. So we will catch you guys when we're back for the third coat. I ended up coming back last Thursday and putting what was supposed to be the final coat on the white. After testing a spot with the flattener, it hardly covered at all, so third coat all around it is. Unfortunately, that's going to have to wait until next week's video. We've got one final weekend of painting coming up so we can reveal the final product in next week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you like what you're seeing. We'll see you next week for the final reveal.